Are you a franchisor, whether early or established, looking for tips and tricks and fresh new ideas on taking your franchise company to the next level? I'm Angela Cote, and I call myself a franchise growth catalyst. I use my experience having grown up in the world of franchising, spending many years on the franchisor side of the franchise relationship, lots of time out in the field supporting franchisees, and then 18 years myself as a multi-unit franchisee. I'm super passionate about creating transformational impact to help franchise companies grow. If you are looking for ideas, we talk about anything from franchisee recruitment, how to find the best franchisees that are going to be the top performers in your brand, to how to support them to really optimize their output. We are more than open to hearing ideas and questions and suggestions. So reach out to me at Angela at AngelaCote.com. Alrighty, let's get started with the Franchise Growth Catalyst podcast. Hello, Angela Cote here, and I am excited to bring you another episode of the Franchise Growth Catalyst podcast, the podcast where franchisors can find unconventional yet practical advice on how to improve franchisee profitability, create exponential growth, and of course, make franchising fun. Now, before we get into today's topic, I want to give a shout out to the amazing franchisors and franchise team members who take the time to stop working in their business to spend time learning from peers at the AC roundtables. I started these roundtables when the pandemic first hit, and we've moved from talking about problem solving due to the initial crisis to talking about things like how to motivate your middle performers, how to leverage brokers, and how to use LinkedIn for franchise lead gen as examples. The most recent franchise or roundtable was dope. We talked about multi-unit franchisees. We talked about how to find them, what traits they need to have, the importance of incorporating performance targets, and everything in between. And we had so much fun that we're going to continue that conversation at our next roundtable. The Emerging Franchisor Roundtable was super awesome, and we talked about how to build the infrastructure for growth, um, everything from who is the first hire to how do you do this on a budget. And the key takeaways that we got were things like, I'm feeling so much lighter, and I'm glad to know that I'm not alone in my feelings and concerns. And we are doing okay. There's not just one way to do a franchise. These kind of takeaways just make us feel so fulfilled about the opportunity that we have to offer this to our network. Um, the marketing roundtable was fire once again, with the topic being tips and tricks for how to use webinars for franchise lead gen. And we always have so much fun in that group. And uh, we are uh, accepting new members of all of these groups. So if you are interested and you are not checking out the the AC roundtables, you are missing out. Be sure to go over to our website, angelacote.com and find the roundtables page and you can get more information there. All right. So on to today's topic. In your franchise recruitment process, do you sometimes lose a candidate and wonder, what could I maybe have done differently? Maybe they were like super enthusiastic and, you know, they wanted to, they were really excited about becoming a franchisee. And at the 11th hour, they send you an email saying they're just not ready. You probably feel crushed because they seemed so excited. You know, I hear people say, you know, we were so aligned. We were, we were connecting and, you know, they, they were excited about solving that pain point. Well, I've got news for you. Losing candidates like this, you are not alone. We hear this all the time from our ongoing clients that we advise at our Play Bigger Mastermind groups and, of course, at the world-famous AC roundtables. People talk about feeling, you know, crushed when they thought a franchise candidate was going to be their next awesome franchisee and they could almost feel that forty dollars or $50,000 franchise fee, you know, in the bank. The good news is, is that today I'm going to slow you down a little bit to think about just a couple of things that might help you with your engagement of franchise candidates and ultimately help you move them to signing. 
assuming they are a fit. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the pain point. You know, we probably have heard this before. And what I see happening is that people tend to overlook how deep they should go with this pain point, and they miss out on digging deeper on what is motivating the candidate to reach out to you. You know, once we hear what we think is the pain point, we often rush to respond too quickly about how we can solve that problem for them. But we miss out if we rush too quickly. We miss out on the opportunity to learn more information, more important information that's going to help us show them even more why this opportunity is a fit. You know, sometimes their problem is a lot deeper than they even know. So for example, if they tell you that they, that the reason they're coming to you is that they're just not feeling fulfilled in their current job. You've got to find out why that is. So then you ask, oh, okay, what do you mean by that? Well, I don't feel like I'm making impact and impact is really important to me. Oh, okay. Well, why do you think that you're not able to make impact? And then, you know, they answer that. And then you say, well, how, you know, what kind of impact are you wanting to make? And what, uh, what do you think it would feel like if you made that, if you could make that impact on, you know, your community around you? How would your life feel different? And the next thing you know, you're finding out that they're coming home frustrated every night and it's, it's, it's having a negative impact on their marriage and their family life. And so now you can, tactfully bring that back into the conversation when you're feeling like, you know, you need to kind of really keep them engaged. Um, So you want to make sure that you find out as early as possible what the pain point is, because you need this exposed so that you can, well, first of all, ensure that your franchise opportunity actually solves that pain point for them, but you can keep coming back to how your your franchise opportunity solves this pain point. So, you know, when they're talking about these challenges and then you can say to them, like, do you feel like owning an XYZ franchise um, would solve this pain point and that you would come home feeling good about yourself because you created impact and you, you changed people's lives? So that's the first tip that I wanted to bring up. And that is on the pain point and digging much deeper and slowing things down when it comes to the pain point and coming back to the pain point as much as possible, ideally in every uh, opportunity that you are having a conversation with them. You know, is that still your pain point? You could even ask, sorry, I'm adding one more thing here, but you could say, you know, are you still feeling like the reason you're exploring this is because of the impact? Are you still feeling that? And if not, then, oh, okay, well, what is it that's motivating you to still continue exploring? exploring this. You know, you need to know this so that you can keep coming back to it because they're not always going to be the ones thinking about how this opportunity solves that pain point. Next up is a concept called next step selling. So tip number two I have for you today on keeping franchisees, uh, franchise candidates engaged is that we want to be focusing just on getting them to the next step. I often see people, and I've done this myself, where we're, we're selling them on step six, seven, or eight, or, or, you know, trying to close the deal too early. Let's slow down and think about what action do we want them to take as a result of this meeting we're in right now? Assuming, of course, that they check all the boxes. I think that we often, um, you know, we put out almost an energy of scarcity when we keep talking about them becoming a franchisee. And sometimes we want to slow it down and just be talking about, you know, in the moment, this conversation is about this. Um, and so we want to, we don't want to jump forward too many steps. And so going into that meeting yourself with clarity on what you, what step you want them to take is going to help you stay really focused. So for example, you might let them know this call is all about us diving deeper into getting, getting to know each other and getting, um, clear on core values to ensure that we're aligned on our values. If we feel aligned at the end of this call, the next step is to set up a call to start talking about numbers, right? So we're just the next, the next step's just another call. It's nothing too, um, intrusive. We're just going to start talking about the next thing. So go into each call or touch point with this in mind that you're just moving them to the next step and it makes it so much more achievable for us. And again, takes us kind of out of that scarcity mindset. Okay. The third tip I have for you today is about a concept called mastering the complex sale. 
the more complex the sale is, the more trust you need to build. And that offering something free and of value often helps build that trust. So obviously a franchise, buying a franchise is a very complex sale. And we need to be thinking about what can we offer them out of, I'm sorry, of value to help build that trust. And I'm not talking here about a swag bag, you know, a pen with a logo on it or one of those like little flip mirrors with the logo. I'm talking about something that's actually going to bring them value to help them make the decision about whether or not to move forward with you. And I think one of the best things you can do and to really add credibility is help them understand things like what are the pros and cons of becoming a franchisee. You know, you could, we talk a lot about every step you should be giving them some kind of homework so that they stay engaged and so that you can monitor whether or not they're going to follow your systems. Do they follow your systems? Do they do the homework you're getting them to do? And how excited are they? How engaged are they? If they're not, if they're coming back without doing that, that's a sign, right? So when we're giving them homework, why not make the homework be something like, a podcast on the pros and cons of becoming a franchisee versus being a small business owner or uh, what kinds of things you can do to prepare yourself to become a business owner. Um, I've got a podcast that I've done on this this exact podcast um, here, and I believe it's number 17, episode 17. And I created it specifically talking to the franchise candidates, asking them to think through the traits of a top performing franchisee and whether or not they have those traits. So it's, it goes through and asks questions about like themselves and how they can determine whether they have the traits of a high performing franchisee. And so that would be something you could send them and then ask them, Hey, um, out of all those traits, what three resonated with you the most? Or was there anything in there that you feel you might need additional support with that you don't naturally have, but feel you can achieve? You know, it gives you that opportunity to provide them some value, but also open up some really important conversation. So definitely recommend sending them something of value, anything third party, or you can create your own uh, types of resources that will help them make these decisions. But sometimes the third party is more credible than, you know, something that you've created internally. So those are the three tips I'm sharing with you today. By all means, this is not an exhaustive list and I didn't go super deep because I'm trying to keep this sort of bite size. But just to summarize, it was uh, going deeper on the pain point. I'm making sure you know what the pain point is. Number two is the next step selling. And the third one is the concept of mastering the complex sale. Just one other kind of bonus thing I want to mention, though, is be careful not to put so much emphasis on following a strict process that you miss on, on, you know, going into these tactics. You know, I hear often hear people talk about their seven steps. We've got it down to seven steps. We show them the webinar. We do this, we do that. And I don't hear these kind of more emotional connection pieces. You know, process is good, no doubt, because when we use a process, we learn what works and what doesn't, and we create efficiencies and we make it scalable and systemizable so others can do it. But what good is all of that if you end up losing a candidate because you were trying to close them too early or you didn't build trust with them by offering value? Or the, like I might have said earlier, one of the, I think the biggest things is the pain point conversation. Did you maybe miss on finding their pain point and you're not showing them how this solves their pain point and helping them think that through and how that's going to feel? So again, this was just a snippet of tips that we work on in our sessions with our clients at AC Inc. Um, if you have questions about any of this, this is exactly what we love to help with. And we would love to hear from you what stood out to you today from this content. And what other areas do you feel that you get tripped up in the franchise recruitment process? You know, are there other areas that you think, oh, if I just could figure this one thing out, I think I could probably award more franchises within the franchise recruitment process. You can let us know by heading on over to the connect page on our website at angelacote.com and, and putting uh, some ideas and questions in there because we love creating content that truly provides value for our audience and helps you break through those barriers and experience transformational growth. And who doesn't want that, right? 
All right. So on the note of transformational growth, go be awesome.